Yo, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. And so surprisingly, Google is stepping into the chip game, which is not surprising to me, even though technically people will look at Google and their Pixel devices and say, oh, well, you know, you guys are late bloomers. You guys are always late to the party. You know, I mean, that's what, that's what people really think about Google when it comes to all this. It's like, it's like that friend that you invite to your party and like all your guests shows up and you guys already got the music kicking, you got the chips and dip out, you know, you got the hors d'oeuvres being brought around and you got that one friend that just shows up like an hour later to make an entrance and that would be Google with all its projects, right? So Pixels, you know, Google's hardware, um, obviously phenomenal devices kicking butt out there in the market, sort of. I mean, when you're going with their mid-rangers, you're really kicking butt out there. Uh, but now Google looks to enter in making its own chip and it's actually, you know, getting the help from Samsung to do this and People have been speculating this for some time now But now we got we, we got a code name for this project It's code name Whitechapel and Whitechapel is Google's own actual um, Chip that they're going to be using in future pixel devices and uh, rumor has it that it's going to be close to 2021 that we will start seeing pixel devices launch with their own dedicated chip, much like Apple does um, with its uh, A Bionics or, you know, like the A Bionic 13, A Bionic 12. You know, Apple designs its own hard um, processing chips and Google's going to be doing the same. Now, as far as for a modem, we don't know what modem they're going to be using, but more than likely they're going to have to assist the help of Qualcomm for this one. Um, but yes, they've been developing a, a processing chip for their own Pixel devices. And while most people who would jump and say, well, when Google builds something, it's going to flop. I don't think in this case, in, in this uh, scenario, it, that's going to happen because Google already has basically its own processing chip for AI. And that would be its neural core processor that it has. That's, you know, specifically like in a Pixel 3 and a Pixel 4. Um, and, you know, this chip basically helps out with, like, you know, the, the photography, right? So when you take a photo with your Pixel, the AI chip inside it, you know, corrects the imperfections really fast. So processing an image on a Pixel 3 is really quick. And if Google can build something like that, then I do have faith in them that their, their processing chip that they would build would be just as good, if not better. So some of the information that we got so far with the Whitechapel, which is the code name for their processing chip, um, it is an eight core ARM chip, uh, which is going to be designed with the help of Samsung. So we mentioned Samsung right there, helping them with it. Now there is some, some rumors floating around circulating, talking about that, uh, Google has been poaching employees from Qualcomm and Intel to help them basically build this chip. Um, and it says right here, and by the way, you know, to cite my source for you guys, um, this is coming from Android police. So you guys can go to their website and check out this full article and read about it. But basically, Whitechapel is a core ARM chip, um, which will be uh, optimized for Google's machine learning technology. Um, let's see. So it's going to be kind of like in the same dynamics as uh, Qualcomm's Hexagon DSP chip. That's pretty much close to that. Now, it's, it is a octa-core chip. Um, Indicated that, you know, it may have a Mali GPU based on Bohr architecture. Uh, on the CPU side, it's rumored to support two A78 cores, two A76 cores, and four 855 cores. So those are it. And uh, one of the things that it's supposed to, you know, said to be doing is that, um, you know, at times when the device is at a, is at a low you know, like a low use point, um, four of the cores will remain on as always. And I'm believing it's those eight, those A55s will stay on. And then the, the two, um, A78s and A76 will kick on as the device needs it. Um, let's see. So I'll take an excerpt from the article itself. It says when it manifests, uh, Axios sources say that Whitechapel will be built by Samsung on its upcoming 5nm node for use in future pixel phones uh, later versions could also end up in chromebooks as well so basically google is getting into the chip game they're going to be building their own chips and i think that's actually pretty good i think when a company you know such as like google goes out of its way to just you know instead of um purchasing you know chips from qualcomm and using it in their devices when they build their own it tends to work out pretty good I mean, you look at Apple, right? 
one of the things that I say, one of the core pillars of iPhones is the fact that Apple builds its own processing chip for them. So they don't rely on a third party source to provide them processing chips for their phones. They build their own. Um, you look at, what's another one that does it? I just had it in my head. Um, Samsung, right? So, and, and this is where Samsung has tested that theory. So in the US, Samsung devices use Qualcomm chips majority of the time, right? And then, you know, people have gone and purchased international versions of those flagship Samsung devices that runs the Exynos chip and have noticed that the Exynos chip has done much better than what the Snapdragon chip has done. Uh, some of the most duly noted content creators here on YouTube who has tested that theory out is Max Lee from High on Android. When he was really big on Samsung, um, he would get the US models, which had the Qualcomm chips in them, and then he would get the international versions that had the Exynos chip in it. And he would literally tell people in his videos comparisons between the user experience and the performance of those same flagship devices using different processing chips and how it affected the user experience. So to see Google now stepping into it, again, better late than never. So I'm actually in support of Google doing this and hopefully they don't kill this project off and just revert to what they're doing right now. Because while Snapdragon processors are really good in some instances, I still think that you know you get a much more better and more distinctive experience with a device such as the Pixel if Google was to build its own processing chip and then we can really get a feel for just how you know the intentions of what the Pixels are supposed to be will be. So anyways guys, that's just my quick information to share with you guys about Google stepping into the processing chip game with its own and who I doubt they're going to call it the Pixel chip. So, but Again, codename Whitechapel. What do you guys think of that? Are you guys, you know, cool with it? Are you guys excited about it? Do you think it's about time they've done this? Or do you think that, that they're going to fail in the process of creating their own processing chip? You guys know where to do that in the comment section of the video. Smash this, not this, but smash the like button. If you guys enjoyed the topic discussed today, uh, if you just found my channel and subscribed, thank you so much for doing so. And hit the bell icon to be notified. I think it's over there. To be notified when I upload more videos here. And if you caught this on IGTV, thanks so much for doing so. And follow the Instagram profile. And you guys will never miss another upload on IGTV. Thanks so much for checking it out. And as always, guys, aloha.